Sorry, I have to come back online because that music was not acceptable. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening, everybody. How you doing today? Bless you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, money, Ayo. God bless and increase you mightily in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Shay, what's up? How you doing? We live in a world full of media streams. Bio, what's Social up? Platforms and this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice a bit glad in it. Oh, yeah. We're about to get into the business of today. Try and share this with somebody and let's trust God to have a good, good time. In Jesus' name, yeah, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. It's a good way to encourage ourselves tonight that everything God has said will come to pass. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Uncle Shay, what's up? How is your sight? More insight, God bless you. So are you ready for today? Hoping to have a good, good discussion by the Spirit of Jehovah. If you can hear me well, let me know. Just type something. Let me know you can hear me well, please. Clear voice, no cracking, nothing. Let me know, please. While we wait for two more minutes. Two more minutes. Oh, see what the Lord has done. Okay, thank you very much. Let me off this music so that I can um, we can have some discussion. Oh, good. Thank you, Amola. So, good evening, everybody. God bless you today. We want to welcome you to. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I want to welcome you to March edition of Grass. Yes, I was online yesterday. Um, uh, last week, I beg your pardon. But um, from today to the end of the month, I want to be talking about some relationship issues. And uh, I believe definitely that um, it's going to be some form of discussion. I want to be part of it. Trusting God that we will all be blessed, really. But. Um, Every opinion matters, and let's trust God to give us grace to give expression to this. One of the reasons I suspended any relationship issues in February is to make sure that when we come together like this, we'll be able to dig deep into this. It won't be a one-day stuff. Every month, every week, we're here, and um, we've got quite a number of good and um, discussions today. That will be a blessing to you, or this month that will be a blessing to you. So uh, I'm going to kickstart this by discussing this subject matter, being naughty but not a narcissist. Uh, in the form of a discussion, I have a few questions to ask you, bringing some statistics and spiritual insight on how to you know, handle this. Um, it's fast becoming an issue, uh, not even just in the world, but even in church today, as we pastor and um, cancer people. So beyond that, we're going to discuss about personality difference under the same roof. So one of my old old friends will be joining us to discuss choleric uh, 
uh, phlegmatic under the same roof. <laughs> you need to learn a bit about um, temperament. They will also talk about love as divine by culture. That's very important to us because um, a lot of relocation is going on and we are relocating. I'm talking to you from UK, depending on where you are listening from. And as a result of that, it's important for us to understand how to balance different cultures because cultures are different. I'm telling you, it's practically different. <laughs> it's different. I will deal with it there. I'm bringing one expert on marriage from Ghana to talk to us about marriage intelligence. I think that we also be able to help uh, those of us that were trusting God to get married this year. I prophesy. <laughs> if you sing under the sound of my voice, shout amen like thunder. <laughs> because this year something good is going to happen to you in Jesus. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for understanding. We thank you because you're going to help us to get inspired today by the help of your spirit. And I ask, oh God, that you will give us the auction, the utterance, and clarity of expression as we discuss this subject matter in Jesus' mighty name. Please, Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice that is you know, abused, discouraged, especially emotionally, as we speak tonight, let the healing power of God strengthen them and assist them in their journey with jesus in jesus most precious name we pray amen again welcome tonight thank you everybody that is joining us especially you guys that's always there that i do appreciate that okay let me quickly do a disclaimer before i start talking <laughs> number one is that some of the things we're going to be discussing or coming from me today uh they, they are my they are truths but they, they they can be harder too so because there's nobody there's um, all knowing uh they are truth but they can be harder to it and it's both a combination of spiritual insight and um research like academic proper research um okay then um i also need to say as a pastor because somebody can hear this topic and they might think probably i'm talking or addressing them we should be very careful we've cancelled people with this kind of uh, uh, personality trait before so it won't be as if i'm not addressing any specific person no 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 that's not the goal neither am i might even try to underestimate or abuse or to say some are like this or some other like that. that's not the goal so we need very care i need to put it on the table this is not personal preference this is just being a pastor and my job is to help people to fear god to feel good and look good so <laughs> it's part of things i have to share does that make sense to you good so the first question tonight is that have you who is a narcissist or a narcissist uh from your own understanding and um, have you met one before <laughs> so, <laughs> and I need to respond before I begin to talk. Who, who, who is the narcissist? And uh, it, whether you know or you don't know, you just assume of it. Have you met one before? Uh, when you met that person, uh, is the person a male or a female? And um, how do you know that the person is a narcissist? So, the, that, that's, that's the first question. 20 times for journey. That's the first question I want to ask. I'm going to give one minute to see if there any response is coming in. I'm asking again, have you, meet, have you met a narcissist before? Is the person a male or a female? And how did you recognize that this person is a narcissist? Let's, let's quickly uh, get a response from that before we start talking. Who is going on first? Have you met one before? Because we live in a world now that everybody is carrying pen and uh, paper and uh, in caution. Ah, he's a narcissist. Ah, he's a. <laughs> Just like that. And, uh, it's, it's possible you write, but we, we need to define terms so that we can be accurate with this. Anybody going on first with me? Okay, Bola is coming. Thank you. They seem to think they are always right. It's either they are way or the highway yeah that's 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 definitely one of the qualities uh they think they they seem to think I, do, they, do they even seem to think i don't think they even seem to think i think they all they they believe they're always right and um it's either their way or the highway you know yeah that makes sense anybody else wants to help us oh help us 
Who is who have you have you met? Okay, Bola, have you met one before? <laughs> Just say yes. <laughs> have you met your one before? Um or can you marry one? Oh sorry, you're married. I should do ask that, sorry. Have you met one before? Anybody, just one more minute. Oh, come on, guys. Give me a rest. Oh, thank you, Amira. You're coming. Okay. So I've met them in all forms. <laughs> Colleagues, family members. <laughs> uh, I've met them in all Okay, Amira, help me out. If eh? Thanks for joining. That's my younger brother. God bless you. Uh, actually, do me that favor. Okay, I've not, Bola says I've not met one before. But I've not met one, but I've seen one, okay, from a distance. I think it's better seen than met, anyway. Uh, Amira is saying that I've met them in all forms, colleagues, family members. Okay, so how, Amira, I'm asking you a question, like probing question. How do you know that this person is a narcissist when you, when you met them? When you met them? How do you know that this person is a narcissist when you met them? one more minute or oh, our time is going i don't want to be a form of discussion so that we can see um uh, we, we can rub idea with this and I, I will begin to talk now and bring some research on the table and i will advise you to to add it to your knowledge and also to be able to have a, a bit of okay let me see what bio is saying bio is saying a narcissist is always controlling and domineering Feeling superior in a relationship, though it can be positive or negative, they are heading narcissism. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, definitely they are uh, heading narcissism. But we're not even talking about the ed, uh, the head type here. We're talking about definitely the, the 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 controlling and domineering, you know, type. Um, yeah, this this makes sense. It's part of the definition, but not all inclusive. I know that person now. Let me first of all, I, I'm expecting you to respond. Please feel free. I'm going to read almost all the comments tonight so that we can be on the same page. Firstly, I recognize them through their behavior. But yeah, I'm rather nice. I recognize them through their behavior. But I want to know what are those behaviors. So while you're typing it, let me begin to put some things on the table. Now, the subject of discussion is not see but not a narcissist. That's the subject of discussion. We're just trying to set balance, and that's what we're doing. On, um, on graphs, say balance, naughty but not a narcissist. So the question now we ask ourselves, who is, what does it mean to be naughty? To be naughty is just simple terms, to so have shy-like behavior. You know, have you seen somebody that has grown up before, male or female, and the way they behave, you say this one is acting like a shy. Uh, shy-like bad behavior, that, that's, that's what it simply means. And a lot of people can be naughty. Somehow, some all of us are not in one place, you know, in one way or the other, you know. Uh, for instance, now I've seen couples that keep malice for weeks, even some for months. It's just, it doesn't make them a narcissist. It's just that they're just shy, shy, shy like behaviors, character defects, you know. Uh, some are struggling to render apologies. Some, 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 some cannot prune their expectation. Just shyly behavior, uh, and, uh, and and that could be noticed. I, I've seen somebody that uh, even as a husband, you have to cook for me. Not only cook, you have to serve me. Not only serve me, where you serve me is important, and how you serve me is important. All of those things, in as much as everybody have their own uh, love languages, but some things can just be adjusted. That it's not really uh, uh, strong enough to to you know to cause any relationship to break down it's just that we're just being naughty we're just being you know shyish uh so i'm already saying that i study psychology so i'm aware of some of the other likely traits in a relationship they are nice to people outside but wicked to their partners um uh, yeah they think the the world re revolves around them that's another very good point uh, narcissist uh, 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 is a personality disorder. Yeah, they call it MPD, which is true. Uh, what I want to just say to you is, um, let, 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 me, let me let me first of all give you, I want to give you six to seven qualities that is found in a narcissist. If seventy or eighty percent of this quality is not found in them, don't tag them as a narcissist. They are a side tendency that they might be naughty, but not a narcissist. And one of the reasons I'm putting this on the table is because we're already coming to a point in the body of Christ now that once a husband and wife have an issue, whosoever is at fault, they just tag themselves, oh, he's a narcissist. 
and um, I know there can be very strong, terrible character the Fed, but this word narcissism is 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 more or less like a, is a fictional story, really. It was a fictional story about a guy that his name is called um, Narcissus. The, it's just like a fictional story, and 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 the, and the guy was a very handsome guy. Everybody loves him. I want to, uh, you know, admire and want to relate with him. But fortunately, the guy just decided to ignore and despise everybody. And uh, at some point, according to the story, a curse was placed on him. And what that means is that it, they begins to uh, see their face on the water. So there was a more of like what we call a, a self reflection. And as a result of that, this same guy ended up committing suicide. So that word narcissism is even from the fictional story, like somebody that once existed like that. So what I wanted to do today is to just tell you about six to seven qualities that must, not me, that must be found in the narcissist. And I have my reason for bringing this on, on, on the table for us. Now, let me, let me read some of this comment. Um, they often do not see how well others are doing or acknowledge it. Yeah? Some people have the trait and not the full personality disorder. Wow, that's a perfect, that's a very good contribution to him. Yeah, some might have the traits, but they don't have the full uh, personality disorder. So now, let's talk about some of these um, uh, qualities, characteristics that you will always find um, um, in a narcissist. Number one is that they are very condescending. In other words, they are proud. Anywhere you see one of them. They're proud and if you're a simple person you will know that somebody cannot be proud and be proud without being discovered they have this mental condition in which people have an you know they, they have an inf inf uh, so, sorry inflated sense of their own importance they are, they're proud they, there's nobody they meet that they don't feel that they are superior to that is one major quality you must find in every one of them was fine with them one of them. I'm right saying scientifically there's a measure of the narcissist trait as cause range between zero to forty. Yeah, thank you. At least I'm 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 enjoying this research that is coming on the table. Number two qualities that you will find in a narcissist, which is also equally important, is that they are really preoccupied with administration and respect. They enjoy respect. They enjoy respect. They can do anything to get it. They want to be valued. They want to be valued at whatever cost. The major challenge we have with, you know, when we're talking about negative narcissists now is that they are very concerned about their appearance before others. They are very concerned about their need above others and they can do anything to get it, even at the expense of others. Let me repeat that. They are very concerned about their appearance before others. They must be known to be special, to be proud, to be big, to be all knowing, all of those things, you know. And they want to be known that they are better than others, and they can do anything to achieve that, even at the expense of others. That's why you, you see a lot of them that will do some wicked things, terrible things. So proud and always want to be right. Yeah, that's true. So those are some of the qualities. So they want respect. Anywhere they get to, you must give them the high table. <laughs> when they're married, they want to be like a god. At home, everything must be towards them. They do nothing. They want everything to be done for them. You know that that that's 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 another quality of a narcissist. It must be there. It must be there. The third one is equally important. Please note this: they exhibit lack of empathy or compassion. They don't have the ability to love others. That's another powerful thing. When you see somebody consistent, not just in the, in the marriage, the family, everywhere, they don't they don't have empathy. I've, I've worked with some people before that you. Uh, <laughs> I remember one day <laughs> I was. This is just a trait. Anyway, it's not that this person I mentioned, I'm, I'm experience I'm quoting the, the person's a narcissist. Uh, uh, I, I I had a baby, so I wanted to go on. We were supposed to do the naming ceremony, so. I assume, which is what happens at work, that when you are not, um, when you have a baby and you want to do the naming ceremony on the third day, you don't come to work. 
You can't believe it. When I went came back to work, my boss almost gave me a query because I didn't seek permission for to be absent on my wedding day or my or the day ceremony day. You know, no empathy, no concern, nothing, no no feelings. More or less, the feelings are dead. Yeah, no empathy, self importance, excessive of self elevation. Some of these behaviors can be one of, but to identify a narcissism, the traits must be consistent. Powerful. Thank you, Amira, for saying that. Powerful. It must be consistent. That's the difference between weakness and wickedness. It must be consistent. It's not that you just meet somebody once and uh, probably probably they just express a sense of no emo emotions uh, or sympathy and just feel that like somebody just called me today now saying to me that oh i i, I needed you to call me and encourage me at this point of time and i wasn't there and i have to apologize not because i didn't want to be there i didn't even know that it's so crucial or important that you do that or that person valued me to a point that she, she wanted me to be there at that point you know stuff like that happen so but when you're talking about narcissism when you're talking about lack of empathy lack of love care for others is a consistent habit it's not a weakness it's a consistent habit you'll find them again and again again and again except when they are pretending does that make sense? Except when they're pretending. So that's one of the qualities. So number one is that they're proud. They feel superior to others. Number two is that they're preoccupied with administration and respect. They want to be accepted. They want to be respected, to be honored. In respect of their behavior. Then another thing is that they, they, they lack empathy, compassion. They don't have the ability to love all day. I won't say they don't have the ability to love others. They've just caged it or silenced that capacity, ability to love others. And I'm about to make a statement now. There's also one of the qualities of a narcissist. And is that they, 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 even when they're in marriage, they are connected sexually, but they are not connected emotionally. And in the, in, the, in the scope of few times of counseling and some of the things I've, read, you know, I've experienced being a pastor, I've seen people that they are connected sexually, but they are not connected emotionally. In fact, I've seen a cases where they are even filing for divorce, but they still went through the back door to still commit, you know, to still have sex. And, and, and one thing about narcissists, narcissists is that anything they do is just for their own pleasure. They don't care about the pleasure of the others including sex even in marriage and that's and that's very very important it's very very important that's one of the traits you know uh goodness god and another thing that i noticed in my study about this character defect is that this narcissist actually the ones that have high one they are relatively free of worries and gloom they, they 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 easily get discouraged and you know why because they pump their discouragement they find pleasure in act you no know, in pulling somebody down they find pleasure in um in uh they, they, they find joy when the part of the relationship they're into are depressed or do a low, low and probably if you watch some some of these movies about these people, it will shock you how people are happy inflicting pain on others. How people are happy using others to climb up and they don't care about what other, what other people is feeling. And these are serious, you know, um, uh, qualities of a narcissist. What I'm trying to say here tonight, which is one of the reasons I brought this subject matter up, as sensitive as it is, is that I'm pleading with you, brothers and sisters. There is not everybody you meet that has character defect that is a narcissist. Because this is becoming gradually an issue in the body of Christ. Whereby once husband or half, wife have issues, whatever it is that causes the split, whatever it is that causes uh, probably engage somebody and depart, whatever it is that is the cause, we shouldn't be in a hurry. And the major thing we are trying to say to the world to other people is that is a narcissist this character defect this personality trait is so strong that even according to research according to research that i did is only 5.5 to 1 percent of the entire population that has it and there are many reasons why you see a narcissist because why reading this is even giving me a bit of a burden to just want to show concern about some people because number one 
a narcissism, you know, most times, or yeah, based on research, most times they begin to find themselves in this level of a you know huge character defect when um, their childhood life they were not properly brought up, they were they were starved of love and emotions when they're young. So when they grow up, they want love and they want it all by themselves. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that, that's one level, at least that shows that that's one major ways by which this thing happened. Then there's another group of people that they, they enter into that zone of being a narcissist when they, they, they have you know, emotional challenges and the only thing they can do is to want to just enter this terrain of I want to revenge. The way they did it to me is the way I want to do it back to them. And there are people like that people like that i've seen you know there are ladies that because when we're talking about narcissists now please don't don't just assume me to just be male alone <laughs> there, are, there are ladies too i need a witness to that <laughs> if you believe that same there are there are ladies too who have emotional background and that's why why we have issue with some extreme feminism that uh, for them feminism is not trying to be yourself you know to to contribute your quota to be valuable as a woman but getting to a level whereby your goal is not to dominate other sex or to dominate other people that level of uh, you know femi feminism is, is already going extreme I, I i are you still with me are you still with me so um, so people, the way they grew up, this type of love sometimes take them to that zone whereby they just want to be loved and they want that love for themselves alone and they can do anything to hold and keep that love. Then some too, as a result of challenges, as they grow up in life, they you know relationship disappointment here and there, you know they they just want to revenge or just turn. They ended up becoming exacting that the ones that that ones give them pain exacting that won't give it give them pain but the third one that was even shocking when i as i studied this subject matter is that we now notice that after a while it has not been reported that this thing called npd is even a gene whereby people can be given back to and now <laughs> they have it that's that trait right from childhood because when 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 somebody when when somebody grows up and is trying to have children, they need to understand that your gene is transferable to your children, spiritual and body. As I studied my three children, I discovered that there is nothing about them that is strange. Is that they picked it from my house, from me, or from my wife, or they picked it from both of us? And that's very important that it's good for us to trust God to have a sense of emotional stability before we try to um, raise children. Is this making sense to anybody today? Let me get your feedback. Are, are you still with me? If you're with me, say yes. Yes, 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 yes. So one of the things that God put on me as a body to share with you today is to please tell us as the body of Christ, as a people, that any time you see somebody having a sense of weakness, don't immediately start calling them a narcissist. This thing is so, it's, 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 not a, it's, not a, it's not a sheep character that you can just see anybody. We get to church today, before you say, oh, he's a narcissist, you say, <laughs> you know, five to six quality, like I said to you, <laughs> must be not just functioning as a character defect in this person's life, but must be consistent before you call somebody a narcissist. So we, we need to be extremely careful about that so that we don't just start tagging anybody, start tagging anybody, start tagging anybody. You know. Though according to research, it was also recorded that we have more men falling prey of this character defect. We have more men being a narcissist than them. Um, than women. In fact, let me read it to you. According to official figures, a narcissistic personality disorder has been found in 7.7% of men. For women, this is 4.8%. So the difference is 2.9%. Incidentally, the percentage among people born after 1980 is significantly higher than among those that were born before 1980. This is probably has to do with upbringing and the influence of social media. This is what well, this thing that I read was so shocking. <laughs> you know, from 1980 down, what they said, according to statistics, we have more people, you know, being born, you know, with, 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 with that ideal, with that, with that personality. 
but I just want to just advise the fact that you got issue with marriage, got issue with people, or you met somebody easily and you say, oh, well, oh, I've seen this, it's proud. Don't just, it's proud, yes, but don't just tag him, oh, he's a narcissist. We need to be very careful. And I tell you why this is becoming an issue. It's becoming an issue. You know, the culture is changing very fast. The culture is changing very fast. And one of the things that, that the culture does is that if we are not careful, whatever it is that we once believe, it can be adulterated or it can be redefined and is and and um, and uh, and redefined in a way that is is of more or less you know less important or not being given a holistic view any longer, especially this subject matter of narcissism. Yeah, is is. <sighs> I'm trying my best not to bring case study of experience to you, but we just be careful. We, we, the world we live now, and I need to say this here, is is women's season of growth. <laughs> it's women's season of growth, irrespective of the culture you're in. Um, it's women's season of influence and societal, let me use the word societal dominance. Or uh, let me use the word, it's women's word. <laughs> as long as this part of end time is concerned, grace, ability and strength and all of this is being released on women. But I would just advise that we don't use this as an opportunity to go extreme. Because I've seen I've seen I've seen women, especially in marriage, and it could be very painful. I've seen women um, use opportunity, culture and, and the law to afflict to afflict men and vice versa. Men normally use culture to afflict women. Especially those of us that came with African culture. Uh, you must respect me even when I'm wrong and all of those nonsense. Um, we do it, but when we when it comes to when it comes to a culture like Western world today, women tend to use the power that be, use the government and all of that, and it, it could be very terrible. And the few people have uh, advice, I tell them, whether you call that guy a narcissist or irreconcilable weakness, whatever it is called, please do not use your ability to fight him. No, don't do that. Don't do that. that that's a, that's a proof that you are not even wounded yourself, that you don't have some uh, uh, some consistent character defect as a person. You can part and part in love. And this is very key. I have a case on the table. Let me just mark, mash, um, mention this in passing. I have a case on the table that I saw last year about a, about a lady to, uh, comp, um, reporting uh, to the police that her husband is a, a rip, raped her. Now, the guy would have done, not that the guy would have done, the guy have done some naughty, stupid things which qualify for that lady to say, I'm leaving you when this is not working again. But not for a husband and wife to be reporting themselves for rape case in that they rape themselves or somebody raped me it doesn't it's just a bit of extreme okay just because you have the ability to make some statement that will influence um uh, the powers you know to support your cause it doesn't it doesn't we don't need to do that and that thing that is causing some of this um imbalance between being weak and being wicked in relationship has always been the issue of this ability to endure has already dropped drastically in the society we live today in families today some of the things that happens between that dad and mom and they are still standing and stay for 40 years 50 years it happens just once in this generation and everybody is packing their load and say i'm not doing it again, <laughs> I say, I'm not doing it again. and i'm just wondering sometimes <laughs> excuse me and i'm wondering sometimes what was the what's the motive behind this because uh, our fathers and our mothers are not even born again and they survived this we were born again, we're speaking in tongues, we have the Holy Ghost inside of us, but we can't enjoy it. And, and it's a big concern. It's a big concern. It's a big concern. And another thing that is causing some of this imbalance and um, extremities among us is this influence of social media. It has tampered with our subconscious mind in a lot of ways. A lot of ways. You know, especially by the way they bring in um, fragmented or incomplete information. To us, and we just as uh, you know, you know, accept it and assimilate it, and before we know it, it's not responsible for how we behave because it has affected our subconscious mind. <laughs> we need to trust God to relent and to relent. All right, 
this is this is this is this is very very important so what i'm just bringing on the table to you guys tonight is that and i'm going to i'm going to run this through again when you meet a narcissist there are about four to six character defects that must be found in them and exhibited consistently before you can attack them are you with me then the word narcissism is not in the bible is not, uh, in fact that's the next question i want to ask you have you found any narcissist in the bible before if you are if you have a case study please send one to me now just mention name that, that you have seen a character in the bible that is a narcissist if you have found one please give it give it to give it give it to me so and while i'm waiting for that there are about four to six character defects that must be found in a narcissist not just one if it's one, it's a weakness. Number two, narcissism can be a male or a female. Then number three, we're going to discuss that can a narcissist uh, change. Uh, that, that, that's, I think that should be a good way to round up this discussion. And let me let me read it again. This quality you must find. So that when you and uh, when you're cancelling somebody or you know somebody about this, don't just say, oh, the way he's talking, mm, he's a proud guy. They, a, somebody can be proud and not be a narcissist male or female there must be four to six qualities that must be found in them exhibited consistently before you can tag them this is the core of the discussion tonight my brothers and sisters if you say somebody is feeling more important than others that makes him be narcissist but even you as a person sometimes you feel more important than others don't you that it takes sometimes wisdom for you to Calm down and say to yourself, oh no, the way I'm relating with this person, I'm feeling better. Let me humble myself. It does happen to all of us, doesn't it? It does happen to all of us. If you get to an occasion of probably 10, 20 people and you're the one they introduce and they say, oh, this is a great man of God, do you go there and be frowning your face and say to yourself, oh, no, 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 don't say that everybody is important. You initially, you feel excited. Then later, you have to talk to yourself that, look, I'm not the only one important, even though I'm the only one, you know, introduced at the moment. So, you can't just visit somebody and say, because somebody is um, uh, feeling uh, importance, you know, then it's, 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 it's a narcissist. Don't, don't, no, 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 it's, that's, that, 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 would, that would be too fast a conclusion. But when you see somebody doing that, but they can do anything to keep that status they can they, they they can kill somebody they can pull down anybody to keep that status then you begin and they can do that consistently you say mm, this is terrible there is no sense of repentance in this person somebody can meet you seven times the first time you met you feel a sense of this one is feeling proud or superior probably he's doing that because he's not doesn't have a clue of who, who you are or who you are but when you now get to a point whereby consistently you meet this person even though they know your work but they are still hammering and pulling you down and feeling in superior and try to just rubbish everything you're doing every time they are right you can't be right then you know that this person has a very terrible trait i'm already saying that being nasty doesn't make someone a bad person yes we're not even talking about the heady narcissism here i'm talking about the negative that's why i read the quality the negative narcissism I read that the the, the early one because the way narcissism is built, you're supposed to have a self importance, which is a good thing. But where the challenge is that when you begin to now climb that kid of self importance at the expense of others, at the expense of others, that's where the, the that's where the terrible things is. Uh. So at what point does narcissism contribute or become a sin? Yeah, that's what I just said. It becomes terrible as a sin when you can do anything anything negative to pull others down to keep that status keep that status do anything you're in marriage you have a self what but your spouse does not have a self what instead of you grooming them to value themselves the way you value yourself you prefer to pull them down just to keep yourself up man terrible and if you do that consistently oh goodness terrible and it's got nothing to do with husband and wife fathers can be a narcissist mothers can be a narcissist a boss can be a narcissist oh don't let me use a pastor i'll just say pastor can be... <laughs> it's not common but i tell you it's possible <laughs> i tell you it's possible it's possible no it's possible praise god so let me run the qualities again because of time 
Thank you for that contribution, Amira. It's, it's very useful. Um, number one is that qualities of a narcissist, consistent qualities of a narcissist that they are consistent, uh, condescending, very proud. They have a mental condition which people have an inf they have inflated sense of their own self importance. Number two is that they are wholly superior to others on a consistent basis. Every everywhere you meet them, they are into a relationship. They into a relation because they knew they are superior. They will never engage into. That's why when you meet a narcissist as a guy, they don't have a pastor. They don't have people that can control them. They want to control everybody, but nobody can control them. They want to correct everybody, but nobody can correct them. Even when they're in pain, they still ignore corrections. Are you with me? And number three is that they are preoccupied with admiration and respect. Any environment they want, they are they want to be honored, they want to be valued, they want to be in the front line. Even when they're ignorance of the subject of discussion, they still want to talk. <laughs> you see that consistently in them. They don't they don't have the grace to be quiet. Uh, you know, and when people, when the knowledge does not proceed from them, it can't be a right knowledge. Those kind of character traits is there. They they just want to be respected, to be honored, uh, and all and all of that. Then they exhibit lack of empathy. This one is very critical. They exhibit lack of empathy, compassion. They 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 don't have the ability to love others. They only love themselves and they pour every love on themselves, but 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 not others. Is a is a, is, a, is a characteristic. Is a defect. That must be seen consistently in them. Oh man, forget about whether they are choleric or phlegmatic or whatever. They can be gentle and be quiet. But I tell you, <laughs> they rejoice in the weakness of others and all of those, you know, temperament. They lack normal feeling of guilt. They lack normal feelings of guilt. They do things wrong, but they, they don't feel it. Don't feel it. <laughs> they pull somebody down and they rejoice in it. They're happy about it. They just walk away. Those kind of, you know, you, you see some husband, they're keeping malice. They know their wife doesn't like it. But when it's causing the wife pain, that's when they're excited. They say, ah, it's touching her. <laughs> you know, those are some of the traits we should be careful about. And I'm pleading if you're single, when you see all of these traits, whether it's a weakness or it's a weakness, please run away. Run away. Let it shame before you move further. Uh, you know, and another thing about these narcissists is that relatively they are free of um, of worry or gloom. Because when when one of the ways to encourage themselves is sometimes the, the the affliction or the way they inflict pain on other people, you know, they feel excited about that. I've seen it even in leadership, and it could be so painful that their joy is when others are down. Others are down intentionally. Gifted people are down under them. They control them. They give the final decision. They, you know they won't give them a chance. And you know that people under you oh, don't let me go there. You know, these are some of the, the qualities. But I'm saying to us again, please, brothers and sisters, when you meet somebody that have this character defect or trait, please don't be in a hurry to say this is a narcissist. Make sure that you are you can see consistently four to six qualities that we just mentioned operating consistently in them before you tag them that doesn't mean that person is not weak that's a different thing but don't tag them to have you know to be to have npd i think narcissists don't know the implication of the action yeah 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 and some of them know but they've ignored it they've ignored it they've, they've ignored it the the passion to achieve their selfish goal is stronger than what kind of pain is going to cause others. And for me, based on experience, especially, I'm more passionate about what women pass through when it comes to a subject matter like this. I'm more passionate about what women pass through. Yeah. Oh, man. Because, hmm. can I give you a case study? Can I give you a case study? Because of time, let me put this case study on the table. In the Bible, I searched. I couldn't find any who can be tagged as a narcissist. The person that I found that is close by is the husband of Abigail, 1 Samuel 25. His name is Naba, aka Fool. <laughs> when I read the conversation between or the relation between this guy and his servant, there are three or four layers of relationship that Naba has. Number one is the relationship between man and God, that even his name was called fool. Number two is the relationship between man and his servant. 
Number three is the relationship between him and his wife. Then number four is the relationship between my personal party in which David came in. That's one of them. And the way he handled all these relationships, you will know that this one is proud. This one is proud. Because one of the things about narcissism is that they are so much, they, they know how to amplify other people's weakness and hide their own. And one of the things that touched me and pained me a lot about the um, Naba, uh, Naba and uh, Abigail's case, as God wanted to do with even the way he died and uh, how, how Abigail was able to, remember the story, how Abigail was able to strengthen, um, uh, to, to, to comfort David and ensure that he didn't do something evil and all of those uh, uh, evil things he plans to do. What pained me most in this story I preach it somehow. Some is it probably is Bola is online. I think we discussed it before. I discussed on the subject matter the dark side of Abigail. Is is something worth meditating? Ah, which I recorded. That is something to share. The dark side of Abigail. There's a level of affliction that the devil places on a woman or anybody in relationship with a narcissist. That by the time they leave that relationship, it takes mercy for them to recover. That's where the problem is. That's where the problem is. You want to ask me, oh, Abigail, what is strong woman? I will call her a woman of understanding. The fact, the first question is that how a woman of understanding ended up marrying a fool. That one we need to discuss is a subject matter for another time. What attracted that to a fool? I don't understand. I don't. I don't understand. This opposite attract is a big issue when it comes to marry like that. But let's put that one aside. You can see the level of wisdom and strength and power. And the intelligence that this woman carries, oh my, I feel like preaching now, I'm passionate about it, <laughs> carries, carried when relating with David. She knew the word of her husband that this one is a forgotten, is, is, a, is a forsaking one, let me use that word. And, and it's so amazing that you can be a narcissist and, and a shiva because that one was, with his foolishness, he was the guy's wedding. <laughs> this thing is so strange, man. <laughs> the guy is weird with his high level foolishness. He has money. Serious ones. Every harvest. 1,000 goals, 3,000 sheep. What's happening? 25 to harvest. The heaven, the future king was seeking his help so that he can send some allocations to him. And the guy insulted. If you read 1 Samuel 25, brothers and sisters, between the time that Abigail left home without telling her husband because that's one of the other traits of narcissism. When you're working with people like that, you are forced to hide information from them because there is nothing you do that will be approved. Even when you are trying to help them, they will not approve. <laughs> they will not approve it. <laughs> so, so, so Abigail have to escape. Between the time Abigail escaped from this man to go and meet David so that evil doesn't happen to them, in her, inter in her interaction with David, she called David Lord, my Lord, about 11 times. To let you know that this woman has that level of high-class high intelligence. But this is where I have my pain, the dark side of Abigail. Did you notice the conversation between David and Abigail? When Naba died, it's so painful. Abigail was sent to, to come and become the wife of David. David sent a message to her. May the relationship not underestimate your capacity. In the days we live in, when you need a wife, you go and look for the wife. But there is something broken in Abigail. That even when David needed the wife, she, he didn't go for her. He sent a messenger to go and bring her. <laughs> In other words, we posted the proposal. Kai! And the lady just said, Mugba. Oh, sorry, I was speaking to you, but accepted. <laughs> accepted. I agreed. And she made a very statement that looks simple but very powerful. She said, I do not even mind to come and wash the feet of my Lord. David was giving you a proposal to be a wife. Then you are responding to that proposal by a desire to be a servant to the king. That is one of the reasons you never heard the voice of Abigail again, even though she lives in the palace. Where was Abigail when David was misbehaving with Bathsheba? Where was, can you imagine if Abigail has a son, the level of wisdom that son would have had compared even to Solomon because he's an intelligent woman. 
but because even though she escaped from that marriage this is a very powerful thing she escaped from that marriage but they paid in her i didn't think she recovered from it in fact when i did for that research was abigail did abigail give back to any baby for david research shows that she has a baby she had a child and probably the, the, the child died and the child died and her destiny was just silenced it will, ah, your destiny will not be silenced in the palace you can't be there and not be heard i want in the emotional drain does for you you can look i have cancelled a few in this true that is not even that they are even married or have issue with nazism or band or spouse even just being emotionally disturbed it has a way of killing your potential when you are strong but you don't have ability to give expression again and it's a terrible thing i pray nobody will kill your destiny in the name of the lord jesus right and if you understand my voice that your, the relationships you are in has pulled you down to a point whereby you don't even have capacity to recover again and even when you left the relationship you can't you, you can't leave a relationship like that and the only thing you are sharing or everything you say for the rest of your life is what will pass with that relationship you've got to learn how to how to, how, how to pass this and move on with your life experience love again god bless you man of god experience love again i'm saying to you experience love again experience love again you will, oh my this is a proper you will not be silenced in the palace the palace is not a place to be quiet it's a place to be influential and you will not be a man and a woman of intelligence like abigail find yourself married to a king enter the palace and the only thing is that your voice is shut down the rest of your life because of your past pain and experience and the goal of the devil is to bring relationship into your life with an intention to pull you down emotionally to a point whereby you don't even want your emotions to come up again you don't want stability again you don't want to feel love again you don't want to be loved again and some people now they've turned that pain into ministry and they've left their destiny and they call upon of god upon their life and any everything they are doing is to be fighting wrong battles and raising generation after them tagging everybody to be evil and wicked that is not god's intentions for us god wants to be healed whether he's wicked or she is wicked or weak god wants to be healed to be healed to find love again and I'm praying you will find love again. You, I say you will find love again. The Holy Ghost in you is a, a, a carries the love, it carries peace, it carries joy, it carries you no know, self-control. And there is no garbage or evil that the devil has planted in you and be you no know, true somebody, whether they call themselves weak or wicked, that should rob you of feeling good about your life and your destiny and feeling good about others. As far as the future is concerned, and that Holy Ghost is what we present to you today that will strengthen you and work well inside of you until you become emotionally stable. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. So, the bottom line today is that somebody can be weak and not be a narcissist. Don't be in a hurry to tag them. However, whether they are weak or they are wicked, when you have the chance to escape, please escape. Especially when you are not married. When you're married and you marry a man that is weak, remember you are weak yourself. Remember the blood of Jesus cover all of us. Then join the journey of trusting God for spiritual encounter and training that will help us as a couple, as a people. To turn that weakness to strength. Hallelujah. Then the last, last question tonight, because of time, I hope you've learned something today. The last question tonight is that how do you rescue a narcissist? How do you rescue a narcissist? The first thing is that they must be aware that they are wrong. If you can't convince them to be wrong, they will not change. And sometimes God uses pain to bring them to that level. But some, I tell you, with the level of pain, they don't care. Because that has become so much of a stronghold that when they are fleeing to one, and that one, like a prey, is rescued from their hand, they are looking for the next person to afflict. But if they can convince themselves, be convinced they can shame, then the journey begins. And the next thing is that they have to go through counseling. 
Somebody cannot, you can't sit down as a pastor, as a leader, or, or a family person, and you met somebody that is a narcissist, and you want to cancel them, and they say because they've repented. They've repent. Repentance is not enough for people with this character defect. There must be counseling that leads to change. And not just change, tested change. <laughs> tested. Tested change. Tested change. To watch them from a distance, how do they how do they treat others? How do they relate with others? Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> so the experiences are coming to my head, but I'm, I'm I really trust God tonight not to share personal experiences. And I think I tried. <laughs> I think I tried. I tried. If you have some, you can share. But I'm very careful as a pastor so that I don't use my platform to pull anybody down. Whew. It's very critical. Then number three. One of the ways by which you know somebody is healthy, as even as a narcissist, is that they must have desire to serve others selfishly, selflessly. They must have a consistent desire to use their strength, ability, image, personality to serve others selflessly. When all the goal is for people to serve them than serve others, I can tell you something is wrong. So one of the ways by which I test somebody that is repenting whether as weak or wicked or a naughty or a narcissist i want to check check can you serve selflessly can you serve without a reward can you help people without something to gain because a narcissist can get to a city and sit ten, as a guy and see 10 ladies it can it can it can ignore nine and and show concern for one just because it's a bit to capture them and when they capture them and win them to themselves Affliction begins. Affliction begins. So can you serve selflessly, generally, without a sense of reward? Then that's a good way to test you. You know, to test you. And we have to be careful when we come to church and you say you're looking for a brother and sister. Somebody can come to church to serve because he's looking for something. He's looking for one sister. I said, oh, he's a worker in church. That's why I married him. Don't let any devil deceive you because devil himself can join workforce. So don't don't let anybody deceive you. Can they serve selflessly? Even you can you can you dream up for can you serve without an intention to without something? So we need to be careful. Let me recommend as we conclude tonight, it's eight o'clock. Uh, give me feedback. Are you are you are you blessed today? Oh my candle certificate the body. There is need to shake in Wally. To him what you see <laughs> if you want. Yeah, that's another thing we need to even we need to check. We need to check, okay? Thank you, Jesus. Let me read more. As the Holy Spirit for her, which is good. Hmm. I know one that is so good to everyone except his wife. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> if I had somebody I guess my wife that was saying it the other day. <laughs> that lady went in UK, a lady did a night shift. <laughs> the night shift. I'm looking for if I can meet that guy's husband. But we need to do research about it. They, this woman do night shift. Wakes up in the morning, gets home in the morning, and the husband says she wants to he wants to eat. And the funny thing about the way this guy eats is that said the husband said he doesn't eat yesterday's food, they want fresh food in UK. <laughs> so this woman without sleep have to go to city center or high street or uh, public bag to go and buy stores to cook for the man. That's so what kind of wickedness in that. At least you can see that this guy does not have a, a trait of empathy. At all. At all. In my own case, gone are those days. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm hungry. I say, is there any food that is not that I go to the kitchen and take care of myself and go back upstairs <laughs> waiting. <laughs> Let me speak Nigerian language. I beg, if you go feel good and look good. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't want <laughs> and I met somebody a leader before. And I didn't even take it serious until he began to say in the passing that I don't cook. I don't cook. I beg. We will talk more about this this month. Hopefully, God give us rest. I know of, I know we can be busy. I know how to share responsibility. But look, we, we, we must, for a family to last, there must be a sense of empathy. There must be a sense of empathy. Scripture must override caution. Have a sense of empathy. I know someone, my wife is saying, I know one that is so good to everyone except his wife. How do you help somebody like that? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a big problem. Sometimes when, oh my, thank you for sharing this. As, as a weakness, not as narcissism, now as a weakness, when you notice that somebody does not respect their spouse, 
but they respect others is because number one the spirit of familiarity is setting in yeah the spirit of familiarity when the spirit of familiarity is setting then you become cash right before your spouse and that's why you need to beat yourself and let me say this to men especially in the world that is becoming a woman's world Actually, those of all living in the, in the in the diaspora, whereby you can wake up today in your house tomorrow, they can call police on you and say, "Go." You have to learn to have values. You can't just you can't you can't remain an African father. You have to <laughs> you have to learn to add value and keep your value at par, because what keeps you functional, what keeps you respond, what keeps you valued, is because you growing and you are putting something on the table. I did it. I was cursing somebody and I said, oh, why is this relationship not working? Why is you giving up on this relationship? And he said, because it's not working. So I did an analysis. As a man, is the guy good? He said, no. As a husband, is the guy good? He said, no. As a, as a father, is the guy good? He said, no. As a priest, is the guy good? He's not spiritual. So what are we going to do? How, how do we pass that person? <laughs> pass that person you have to add value not as a man alone but as a woman you have to add value you have to add value increase value and when that familiarity is coming in is a sign of weakness and i'm praying that that kind of a man will be exposed to people to, to guide them and there are a lot of ways by which it is done i've seen cases of somebody underestimating and disrespecting a spouse even though i'm, I'm using that word spouse be careful but let me be specific disrespecting his wife you know, uh, consistently, why caring for people outside? You know, you get to work, you 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 go to all the ladies, hello ma, but you just snap at your at your wife at home and all of that. And I've seen people that does that, and it's terrible. And as men, we've got to repent. We've got to repent. It's terrible. So what happens to this guy was that his friends came home, and they saw the way this woman was treating them, because it has become a default setting in treating her husband. That's what he, he expects. Uh, bring my food, bring it where I am, serve it, do this, do this, even sometimes stay there while I'm eating, you know, those kind of stupid things. So this woman has become a part, part of her life and she was treating uh, all other guys which are friends like that. And some of the friends said, what? Is this the way your wife is treating you? He said, you better take care of this woman. Because we, <laughs> the one we have at home wasn't treated. That's one of the ways I increase the value you know of that woman before this man and if the if it's a weakness the woman will adjust but if it is wicked then she will in her mind she will say i'm the one that formed her to be acting like this and she has to keep it and that is terrible and i'm telling you any relationship you are into male or female any relation you are into that is draining you emotionally on a consistent basis no sense of repentance no no sense of adjustment no you are just annoyed unhappy on a consistent basis Please, it, it, it can kill destiny. So you, it's something you need to very care. Quickly cry out for help, for support, for advice, you know, for counsel. I'm praying for the spirit of repentance of people like that in Jesus' name. Not sure if the lady is still alive today. Wow, that's that's a terrible thing. That's a terrible thing. I, mean, I have more feelings for I'm more feeling for women when it comes to this aspect anyway because they suffer more. The culture has really, really you know as really really you know the cost things to happen in that direction praise god okay <laughs> yeah scripture surpasses uh culture yeah true everyone must be great god bless you wow so this is how far we can go tonight did you enjoy the conversation and um i'm praying that you will not just um, learn about this but you will also be an advocate all right be an advocate and um, when you see somebody in love no matter the bed they place on them love and by the time you share four to six qualities of a narcissist negative narcissist in them better advise them insist even if it is their wedding gift or engagement they insist they will consider it in fact the level i am now i don't care your opinion about me when i see something wrong i raise the alarm please insist let them change and let's see tests and proofs of change before uh, you go ahead to do that and how to know this and let me put this as a conclusion in any form of relation you are going to go into it's so easy for you to recognize this when when you bring it um, and one of the things that a narcissist does is that when it comes into your life or when she comes to your life she blocks you or she blocks all the relationships in your life the goal is to isolate you 
he or she will put something on the table that will make you to fall in love or to be closer to it, to, to, to them in a way that they isolate you. And once they isolate you, they block all those relationships around you so that they can afflict and afflict alone. And it's a terrible thing. So you're meeting somebody you want to get married or somebody is telling you or your, your sister is telling you I want to get married. And the guy is get, she's getting married to is not interested in family members. He's not interested in the church he attends. He's not interested in, you know, in the past relationships. He's not interested in the pastor and all of that. You better run away. You better run away. That the only thing they show up is just one or two days canceling. And uh, we want to see them regularly so that we can test their character. And I don't give a damn about this. So I'm sorry, I'm using negative. I, as a pastor, I, you just have to be rigid about this so that you can get it right. So that you don't end up joining people together and, and they suffer. And, and in your heart, you'll say you're the one that joined them together. We need to be very careful about this. I'm telling you, I don't have time. I would have told you about my love story. My relation, the relations that I brought into my marriage, the relation with my wife that we brought into our marriage, you know, and people in our lives is very important. Very important. Very important. We need to be sensitive. And God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. So the goal today, number one, is to present this as a rapid um, issue that is going on, not just in the world, but in the church. Number two is to let you know that weakness is not the same as wickedness. That if somebody has some trait of bad character does not make them a narcissist. And I've told you some of the qualities you'll find in a negative narcissist. And it's important for you to know that they can change if they're ready to, you know, subject themselves to counseling and uh, self-control and all of that, self, you know, selflessly. But most importantly, I brought this discussion on the table for you to be a voice for men and women in pain being a victim of a narcissist. Anywhere you see it, raise an alarm. Help somebody. Help somebody. They can be smiling outside, but they're in pain inside. Help somebody. It's part of our job to do. As a pastor, it's part of our job to do. They might accuse us, they might be offended in us, they might even want to fight us, but we're fighting the battle of the Lord. That a human being that God has created with wisdom and dignity and destiny must not die sheep in the hand of another person just because of the selfishness that is locked up in the heart of human being. It's not part of God's agenda and it will not be accepted in our society, even in the body of Christ. In Jesus' precious name. I pray God's blessings upon marriages, upon everyone today, in the heart for increase in knowledge and wisdom and in understanding. In the precious name of Jesus. Um, there are two words that I received while I was praying today. It says somebody is in a spiritual battle. In a spiritual battle. Probably that battle repeats itself again and again. I don't know the nature of the battle, but there is a battle going on in your life. And this battle has to do with exchange of words. A thought comes to you, you fight it back. Thoughts come to you, you fight it back. God just asked me to tell you and encourage you that don't give up. He said, be steadfast, immovable. He said, do any time that thought keep repeating itself about you, do not keep your mouth shut. Keep talking. Keep speaking against it. Be steadfast, immovable. Hallelujah. It's very important. Then there's somebody else said, do not allow the influence of people around you to take you from being the original you. Seems as if there are influences that are already rubbing on you that's making you to think the way they think, not the way you're supposed to think. And it does happen, but you need to be very careful that I made it to be original and you have to keep your original state. The fact that the, 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 the influence around you is profiting or is moving well or is producing results does not mean you should join them. Keep your original state. Don't be fake. Be original. And that's what he said I should tell to somebody today. I pray God's blessing and grace upon everyone. I ask that the light of God will shine upon our heart. That God will cause our family to be peaceful and be beautiful. In the name of Jesus, right? I'm praying for a child right now that is feeling fever, fever. 
fever. I cause that sickness and I pray healing over that child in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray against memory loss. I pray against memory loss. I pray against memory loss that any information, any revelation, every thought, every idea that is important to your season right now or the season you are about to enter into that you have lost or forgotten. The enemy does not have the capacity to raise thought from you. And if he does, the spirit of remembrance lives inside of us. That loss will not be forever. It will be restored. In the name of the Lord Jesus, right? Kappa loss a fake table. Of course, about I perceive in my house somebody having a scare, a fear, or having an accident in the kitchen. Accident in the kitchen. Fear not. God or Japos of Freke Tepro Kosufa Katapa Londo Sikepra Kotopa Lagadaboshe. Be confident in the love and the protection of Jehovah. Be confident in the love and the protection of Jehovah. Be confident. I'll build your confidence in it. For it will, not, it will not leave you nor forsake you in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I pray for the spirit of self-control over our lives. I am saying that to somebody that God will take you to that terrain of emotional stability. One of the things that is causing problem in your marriage is because there is no emotional stability. Anytime you are hungry, it goes excess. Anything you do, you just go excess, excess, excess. It's not wrong to be angry, but not to go to excess, to a point where you say nasty things, you, you misbehave. I pray the spirit of self-control over that person right now, in the name of Jesus. Oh, makonde veke se prakuta bala jike palaba lodende. To somebody God is saying, in our families, I will give you the weapon of honor. Yes, the weapon of honor that you will see it. You will see it. You will see it. I know you, you are tempted to see your spouse like your maid. You are tempted to see your parents so familiar with so, but the spirit of honor is coming upon us in which we honor our spouse. We will honor our spouse. Husband honoring their wife, wife honoring their husband, even honor our children. In the name of Jesus, we establish that auction upon every family under the sound of my voice right now. The spirit of honor, the spirit of honor rests upon our homes uh, in the name of Jesus. We will not give to outsider what we're supposed to invest inside in the name of the Lord Jesus. Strength is given to us by the power of the Spirit. Thank you, precious Father. Is there anyone that suffer from narcissism of any kind? Oh, they're broken down. They're just saying, can I even find love again? Can I even love again? I speak the mercy of God that destiny will mark you. Destiny will embrace you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, destiny will mark you, destiny will embrace you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, your past will not pull your back on the ground, it will not afflict your future. That irrespective of how the enemy has, you know, has afflicted you in your past relationships, the one that is, owns your future will shame the narratives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, oh, Makando Seke Prakota Lagadaba, Mende Vegedebo. I'm hearing this. Somebody, you 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 think you can flirt your way into godly relationship? It doesn't work that way. Don't don't you don't need to flirt. Don't need to flirt. You don't need to underestimate yourself. I'm saying that to somebody specifically. You don't need to flirt. You don't. I hear that word flirt. You don't need to flirt. You don't need to prove yourself cheap or prove yourself excessively to be available. I am saying to you that if you have value, you'll be seen. And I put this word upon your head. That even like a root, you will find yourself in the feed of Boaz and Boaz will recognize you at the four sisters. I decree and declare over that person the spirit of recognition. The spirit that makes you noticeable to right relationship including your spouse. In the name of Jesus. For I speak to that person your hearts are hope. Oh, my candle, if you have anybody connected to you, trust single maritally. I decree and declare that this month, there will be a navigation. There will be a good news. There will be a testimony. God will make you feel good with yourself and with people that God is going to bring your way. Your marital destiny will enter into a new dimension. This month, you will know the definition of true love in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. The spirit of reconciliation. Reconciliation is the spirit. Because in the natural, you don't even know how to get out of it, how to solve it. But reconciliation is a spirit. <laughs> oh, reconciliation is a spirit. And I'm saying that to somebody, that you will not give up on that marriage. You won't give up. Reconciliation is a spirit. 
and that spirit will come upon you and both both of you will see it and you will walk that person i'm talking about god said go bless you financially he's going to bless that family financially and i'm praying that whatever it is that weaken your love for your spouse god is coming in to strengthen it and help you in the name of jesus somebody is i'm hearing my spirit i will give you capacity to build i'm rounding up now i'll give you capacity to build and i'm praying you will you will take that strength and stamina i play hands upon you you will have capacity you're a builder Take yourself as one. You're a builder. They fought build for you, but it's time for you to build your life the way God wants it to be. You're a builder. And God will give you the energy, the resources, the relationship to build a strong family, to build a strong destiny. All to the glory of God. Father, we give you praise for instructions and help tonight. In the precious name of Jesus. We declare and declare, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. And let the righteous establish. We serve Jesus and we serve him alone. And we give him glory forevermore. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Wow, I've got to go tonight. I'll see you next week, same time. Please share this and let somebody be aware. I'll be back to talk about with um, we got you next week about character, temperament at home, so that we can go deep in this weakness aspect that you are choleric, you are phlegmatic. If I pick that topic because that is what's happening in my house, I'm a choleric sang I'm a choleric flag. My wife is a is a is a flag. She's a flag, at least I know with the uh, mayor of melancholy. In the same roof. We don't do everything. We are different, hundred percent. No, let me say probably eighty percent. And I will share some of them with you next week. But we are coping. <laughs> so how do we handle it? Is the focus of discussion next week. God bless you. I love you. Thanks for joining tonight. And uh, I'll see you next week by God's grace. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Mr. Sunday, Shelly, thanks for joining. I appreciate you. Okay, oh, God bless you. Memory loss banish in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, money are you. God bless you. Bola, God bless you. Address, I see you. Flink writers, God bless you. In Jesus' name. Everyone, thank you so much. I see you next week, 7 p.m. UK time, 8 p.m. Uh, yeah, same time. God bless you. I salute your destiny. Have a wonderful night, friends, and please take time to rest. God bless you.